Okay, we're back here live inside theCUBE. This is Sapphire Now, live from Orlando. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of Sapphire Now, our fourth year here, and we are in the Global Communication Center. This is where all the action's happening around the world. They had the live press conference earlier with the co-CEOs. Yesterday we had, uh, again, the keynote presentations come in here for the Q&A with the Global Press Corps, and just had the executive committee hearing about the business results, all the questions about the business model and the financial model. Obviously, SAP's pumping on all cylinders, and one of those areas is social. Bill McDermott said social the new dial tone, social is part of the new CRM. People see CRM and ERP, all the supply chain dynamics applying to people, and obviously SAP is about people, as Bill McDermott said. And we have Samir Patel, the Global Vice President and General Manager of the Enterprise Social Software Team. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. I, th I think you've pretty much covered it well. I don't have much to add. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. We're going to dig in. We've known each other for a while. You're new to SAP, but you're not new to the enterprise. We sure. called, used to be called Enterprise 2.0. Yep. Um, so back, you know, just roll the clock back even eight years ago, yep. kind of started the early adopters and the early kind of pioneers yep. where we're really trying to read the tea leaves around, hey, you know, the enterprise is shifting to cloud. Um, and we saw some early indications on that with you know, democratization of media, blogging, podcasting, cloud hits the scene, now mobile, obviously in 20, 2007 the iPhone changed the game. So, yep. so since then, dramatic change. Sure. Um, social media now is legitimate, and uh, some people say you know, that's the new form of interaction, yep. and there's all big data around it. So there's a lot of stuff going yeah, on yeah. around social. Yeah. So you got big data, you got analytics, you got cloud, you got real time. Yeah. All these things are changing the way people work and the way they expect to be served yeah. and communicate. Sure. So there's multiple variables. Yes. So how do you guys look at your social software in the enterprise group? Because the consumerization of IT is happening. Yeah. All those things are blurring together. So how do you view all those dimensions and, and what's the current update? Sure. So I, you know, you're absolutely right, right? Like I think, I think we saw the, you know, we saw the changes happen on the social web, public social web. And we saw tremendous, you know, new Economies, if you will, emerge out of that, right? Um, with the kind of engagement we got off things like F Facebook and Twitter, and you know, for the last six years up until I would say, you know, 2011, we spend most of our time really trying to like forklift these public social concepts and dump them in the enterprise, and said, hey, if Facebook can get the kind of engagement it gets, we should have one of these in the company. But they never came. <laughs> Yeah, recycled forums, recycled right. kind of Q&A. Right, and we started looking at every new feature that came out on the social public web, just dump it in the enterprise, right? But the reality is, is that, you know, you had this sort of, uh, fifth tab in my browser had the social network, but work was actually happening in my CRM system or my supply chain system or my, or email for that matter, or documents, right? And so, the way we looked at it is, you know, I, you're right, I came, I came last year and what we set out last year at Orlando was, a very clear strategy on what does social need to be like if it's going to actually have value in the enterprise. Now, um, what comes out of that is, 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 you know, instead of looking at it as this sort of siloed application of social that happens in a corner, it's really what is the confluence of people, data, business process, and content to really be able to do this correctly. And so we went back to the drawing board on what social can actually mean in the enterprise by really looking at how do you infuse social co collaborative concepts into the applications where work actually gets done and where you face problems where you feel like you need the power of your network. An opportunity in CRM lands in your lap. That's the point at which you need, like who are the ex experts inside my 60,000 person company? They don't want a silo. They, don't do, they do not want a siloed application. They don't want a silo and they want one that has business context. So we infuse it in our business analytics application where you see a number you don't like. You know, are we going to miss the quarter? Are we going to make <laughs> the quarter? Yeah. Jam shows up right in there to help you with decision making tools on pro conning and what we're going to miss it, we're going to make it. John said this, Samir said that, and you start to essentially do what you and I would do in the physical world when you saw a number, which would be let's get in a room and let's have a conversation. We're yeah. infusing social into those very applications. Right? And we're doing this across our on-premise applications, across our cloud applications, and then what you saw uh, at the, in the press releases yesterday is also um, on HANA Cloud, so that it's part of the core platform. If you're building a new application and you need social or collaboration, you just pull it. And they're building that into, so building some stuff, some intimate analysis, for example, yeah. into HANA. So there's yeah. a lot of stuff being embedded into HANA yeah, to into enable that, right? Exactly, and I mean, I think that's one of the big use cases we're talking about here today, which is one of the newer things we did, you know, um, is service. So how do you go from sentiment that you've captured from the public web, um, turning that sentiment because you start to figure out what are, what are conversations I need to be a part of, what subsect of those conversations need to be turned into real tickets 
in my support application, and then when the knowledge base doesn't have the answer, how do I unleash the power of my experts inside my organization or even my partners to close the loop for these customers? Because what you know better than most people is the, the latency or the, the tolerance we all have as consumers on the web when we deal with businesses is, if it's B2C, I want the answer now. If it's B2B, at least acknowledge you're working on it. <laughs> and don't lie. Yeah, a gesture, I'll get, I'll right. get back to but you. But how do you do that at that at speed? The only way to do that at that speed is have the entire organization connected so you can find those experts anywhere in the world to wrap around a customer's so phone. Talk about how someone gets involved with the, with the, with the software and the, yeah. and the application. Because you know, Ariba's out here, four billion yeah. dollar plus acquisition. Yeah. That's a business network, you're connecting disparate, yeah. essentially extranets, if you yeah. will, in a modern cloud version of extranets. And you have analytics and yeah. you have connections. So yeah. different databases, so they might have different, how do I get those guys involved? Is it in, in specific to the company? Do they have to be jam subscribers? So, no, that's a great question. So one of the other bedrock, you know, so, so the, the first sort of design ethos was social where you need it. In an application, on a device, on the network, right? The second is exactly what you said when we designed them. We said, we should not be in the business to tell our customers that when you have a core collaborative need, be that in a marketing process or a product management process, that you should, you should be able to bring your entire ecosystem in there. So out of the box, Jam is designed where whatever that business process is in, if, if you're building a marketing campaign and you want to bring your, one of your suppliers in, you should mm -hmm. be able to do that, right? So. Yeah. When you talk about you know, Ariba Easily. is the business. It should be very easy. Well, it should be easy, and the other thing is, is because we have the application context, it's not like you know, it's just standalone social. The, the, the metadata we have on who are the right people to bring in is very, very different, right? We know the structured data, and we can tell you, well, if it's in CRM, it's a lead in the Midwest this size, use that data to find the right experts for your organization. So, only because we're SAP and because we own the very applications can we bring this sort of integrated view of social. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just reading from Twitter, Mark Smith um, from Ventana Group, I just picked up a tweet from yesterday. SAP McDermott snubs uh, Salesforce.com's chatter yeah. in regards to SAP Jam. Well, yeah. good, they recognize the Benioff factor. Yeah. SAP needs help in CRM. Yeah. Uh, what the hell does that mean? Needs help in the CRM. Well, I mean, I think you, should about you should talk to Mark. <laughs> uh, you know, Mark's here, by the way. I'm, I said hi to him. Um, he is here. He is here. Yeah, yeah. So no, I, look, I think you know the way we're looking at the way we're looking at CRM, and I think you may have heard Jeff Lautenbach speak, right? Is you know it's a really, really exciting value proposition that he's put in place, which is stepping up from transactional CRM for a minute, right? And let's hone in on if you're a VP of sales, what is it that's keeping you up at night right now? Yeah. It's not necessarily a, a feature in CRM or a feature there. It is, I got all these sales reps I need to ramp up. I need to get them productive. I need to get them working. I need to be better at forecasting, right? And I need to make sure that my best customers are my best advocates. And so, the CRM. And, yeah, and I would also add one thing is that uh, they, they want to put the right sales guy in the right situation got it. at the right time. You got it. That is part of the larger sales performance story. And I think they've, you know, I mean, I love and I'm biased, obviously, because these are my <laughs> colleagues, but I think it's a brilliant way of looking at it, which is this idea of prospect to promoter. And how do you look across that whole chain so you're building deeper relationships with your customers? So, you know, we, it's, this is not about just the jam piece is one piece it's that enables that, but it is, yeah, it is what is customer relationships in the 21st century. So I think SAP is absolutely paying attention to CRM. I think the messaging is really refreshing. Um, and you know we've got the team to execute against that. Right? Yeah, so I think one of those things you've been, I mean, CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management, was defined in an analog world where you had leads and you had static databases and you know, pump things through and leads pop up to the yeah. sales guy and you know, the Glen Gary leads, as he used to say in the <laughs> sales joke, you know, the good leads and yeah. so, but that's changing now. You have now a connected consumer. Yeah. And you have a whole nother dynamic, so that's going to completely redefine well, what the it customer is, relationship process. Which is when what I call you know, putting the relationship back in customer relationship management, yeah. right? We kind of forgot about that relationship word. It was really a very transactive process, right? Of like, it was really customer record management in some ways. But to truly build those relationships with customers, if they're on the social web, if they're not on the social web, and taking that and having a consistent view is going to completely change how we think about what we formally call CRM, right? Yeah. I think one of the things that uh, we talk about and we study a lot is an uh, interesting trend, which is, you know, you look at Twitter and look at the social interaction, people are exploding their relationships and their social graphs, their intent graphs, their, their uh, the transient relationships, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, at the exact opposite has happened. So instead, as they expand their network effect, yeah. they're also 
looking for personal information. So the marketing is changing and it's a persona of one, right? Yeah. So now we have the opportunity to use things like Ana yeah. to say, hey, we can actually market to the individual. We can build relationships to the individual, at the same time give them access to the entire world of relationships. I think that's one, and the other powerful part of the HANA side too is, is you know, this, the, the, your ability to do two things. One is, is at the speed at which the, today's customer expects, be able to have that 360 degree view of what they're thinking, right? Um, and second is, is be able to also have the flexibility to build what Bill talked about today, which is B2B to B to C, right? How are we helping our customers actually build out the B to C element? If I'm, if I'm selling into a big bank and they want to build applications for loyalty management, right, it's a natural extension of how they interact with their customers. All that has to be done consistently. So it's all about content, right? So yeah. content becomes a very big part of relationships. People yeah. like to gather around the watering hole or the water cooler, whatever you want to call it in the old world. Yeah. And they talk, the sure. gossip, whatever you want, it is content. So, so content's at the, at the center of conversations yeah. and relationships. Yeah. You know, sports, hey, the Bruins win in overtime, yeah. it's a great win. Um, that creates a You're lot Boston of, you know, guy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 had to put the plug in for the Bruins. If people come in the cube and they talk, um, and it generates uh, relationships, yeah. conversations, gravity, sure. Sure. Um, and the content. So sure. how do you look at the content? Content, could, content could be, hey, this is the backlog report. Um, so I think, I mean, it's a great point. I mean, if you remember, you know, if you Think about what I started with, right? Like uh, the the core sort of framework around which we're building this is is built around people, process, data, and content. These are all core social objects, if you will, that drive conversations, right? So whether to your point, whether it's you know it could be something that's in a uh, specific content around support, it could be around um, you know we do. Um, one of the things we've done with Jam is integrated into our LMS applications, right? So when customers are trying to do learning, uh, and they normally would buy LMS applications for courseware, we've integrated social and informal learning into that because the content that you and I would gather around is not just a PowerPoint, but it could be, you know, I learn from you as much as I learn from a PowerPoint if we work for the same company. Yeah. And how do I take tidbits of information? So we have a customer, for example, 3,500 nurses, and they need to wear a glove in a certain way. Right, for insurance and safety purposes. How do you do that in a PowerPoint? So this is where you pull Jam up, video based, take yeah. a video, say this, how you tie it to make sure it doesn't do this, throw it out in two days by the way, mm -hmm. and you publish that not onto some feed where it gets lost, but you publish it and make it part of the institutional knowledge. You start thinking about the value, like we talk about content from a marketing perspective often, you think about the value of that kind of content to really improve efficiency and, and lower risk inside organizations. That's like, uh, that's why we call it sort of putting the business back in social business, right? So talk about like the customers. I mean, you know, as a general manager, you get visibility in the product roadmap. Yeah. Uh, and you also have to talk to customers. And you know, one of the ethos is of SAP, and Schnabe is probably the most humble of all the executives in the industry around this, is, is that, you know, they don't like to brag and hype up stuff, but sure. they also go out and do validation. Sure. You know, he won't do a GA unless it's actually sure. like he talks to customers. Sure. And then he scales, so you yeah. heard him on the stage today. Once we talk to customers, sure. we lock it in, then we yeah. scale it up. Uh, where are you guys in that process? That's a great, are you that's still a great thing. We're, you know, it's something that is extremely important to us and we have followed SAP's legacy on this as we built out, you know, Jam is, it's, it's like a startup inside SAP. <laughs> we're 9.8 million users, we're not a startup. I would, you know, we've scaled like Out of, out of their 20, what, 23 million uh, on SAP? On SAP, but remember this, that you know, this is, a lot of that is net new. It's selling okay. with a lot of ILMS products. Still right? not bad penetration. I mean, it's not even about penetration. I mean, I think net new to me is as exciting as yeah. penetration Yeah, yeah, as well, of course. Right? Um, but we've done I mean, exactly. Snabe told me off stage after the press conference that a third of their business on Han is new, yeah. non SAP customers. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's And Success new. Factors does a lot of that too, right? <laughs> so, we, and we integrate with our Success Factors applications, right? So, we go along with them. Now, to your question, we're doing exactly that. I mean, we had 3M, the, the global VP of e transformation, brought in by the CEO to transform how 3M works, talking about how they're using social collaboration and Jam as a platform of choice to completely rethink how they're doing. You know, doing in, doing innovation broadly, but like I think one of the most exciting things I heard him in his keynote today um, was talking about how they're taking their industrial innovation success and commercializing it for individual consumers, and they're starting to see, use collaboration to make sure that those ideas that were done for big industrial process astronauts, for example, how they're bringing that kind of innovation down, right? So I think that's a. Um, uh, uh, yeah. So let's talk about flexibility. So that, yeah. so I buy that. So yeah. but the other thing is is that every use case is different because culture yeah. factors into yeah. a lot of these companies. So yeah. like, 
there's no one yeah. tool. Yeah. So it has to be adaptable. Absolutely. So, because social is social. So, so what do you guys do to make yeah, it so adaptable? So we did two things. One is, is we've, you know, for our own sanity, right, because SAP has so many places we can infuse jam, right? We've, we've sort of done two things. One is, is we've built out out of the box what we call high velocity, high value solutions, like learning, like CRM. Um, then half of our engineering effort to date went into building out APIs. What we call the get out of the way strategy. Yeah, yeah, where APIs are good. customers can, can innovate query. their own and can innovate around, you know, if you're in fraud management and core banking, you know, you're going to have uses, very unique uses in terms of how you work this. This essentially gets us out of the mix and says customers can work, innovate as faster than us if they'd like to, but we want to make sure that we allow them to do that as much as we build out of the box stuff. And to me, that's super powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So, absolutely. Yeah. I know you got to run, I so run, I want to yeah. ask you a few more last questions, one last question. Sure. Um, share with the folks what you've learned um, and, and what Jam is doing that is uh, amazing. So, and, 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 and share one, the most amazing thing that you've seen with Jam. Yeah. So, you know, on a personal note, you know, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, right? In that, that you know, when I talk about, when we look at this flavor of social, remember, I have the luxury of 40 years of SAP being in the application domain business and in the in, in the and, and the industry knowledge that they have. So when we start looking at doing any kind of transformation work, we don't start with, you know, let's make you a social enterprise or let's put a blog in your company. We start with these core tectonic problems inside utilities industries yeah. and we build from then on. And on big infrastructures. Big infrastructure, you know, big platforms, yeah, big capability. This isn't the well, exactly. So we're totally blessed because we've got that kind of breadth inside SAP to be able to take real business solutions to customers, right? Second is, is because we have all the application stack. We don't have get siloed in sort of like, let's just talk about social and CRM or social and HR. We've got access to order to cash. We've got you know, the entire process. And that's pretty powerful because you start thinking about, back to your original conversation about how social has taken over the public world. Yeah. This is about, the, in my opinion, one of the real ways that it has a shot to take over how we work on a day-to-day -day basis. It's right? super exciting. I think you're in a, at the tip of the iceberg here. I think it's re, not even the national anthem being sung here because it's not even inundating, in my opinion. I think we're going to see yeah. an explosive creativity. I think when you start unleashing the notion of merging data sets really fast yeah. in real time, HANA, Hadoop, all these new technologies, and you know, enabling developers to actually sure. write code as infrastructure as code, DevOps, all the stuff yeah. that we've been, been seeing, that stuff comes together. Mm -hmm. You're going to see, in my opinion, an explosive developer community. So yeah. then, then we're in an API society. Right? Yeah. The data center, as Dave Vellante always says, is the API. Yeah. And so we're going to start, to, we're gonna start yeah. seeing that notion where then you guys are going to be sure. out with Jam, yeah. and that would be interesting to follow you. Great to have you on theCUBE, Samir Patel, General Manager of the Enterprise Software Group here at SAP. This is set live from Sapphire, SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage from, or live from Orlando in the Global Press uh, Center here in Florida. We'll be right back with our next guest.